but he didn't pick a team that you would pick to win an absolutely crucial game. Right, so let's go to last night's Europa League action. My goodness. <laughs> it was good stuff, wasn't it? My goodness. Liverpool 0, Atta Banter 3. Mm. Liverpool Just... fans going, keep talking about the widget. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my goodness, Pete Donaldson. I mean, it, it's hard to take anything from this match other than this is the ultimate of off days, isn't it, really? I mean, it, it, yeah. nobody expected this. Nobody expected after the ball, like, smashing off Kelleher's face quite early oh, on. What a save that was. Um, the way that the commentary team spoke about that sort of save, and it was, I mean, was it a save or was it just a, a lucky smash in the face? Because you can't really move your head. Well, Schmeichel-esque, really, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. I, 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 the, I, the, I, the, the idea big, yeah. that your presence fills the goal. Mm, in, true, in, yeah, true. In the same way, if someone whacks a volley in from about 30 yards mm. you are just like hitting it hard at a sort of general area general area yeah like, you can't place that very well yeah, yeah. okay well I, I think that the way that the commentary team sort of dealt with that chance was really funny if you mm. go back and listen to it in retrospect because they do got sort of go well they'll, uh, they'll have to take their chances won't they uh, at <laughs> yeah. Atlanta yeah yeah, yeah yeah and they fucking did didn't they mate <laughs> didn't age very well that did it <laughs> uh, well I mean yeah so it was a very early chance of course but I mean it's it's a funny one to 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 look at the result because mm. in that first half, I mean, Har- Harvey Elliott hits post and bar or bar and post. Mm. They had with ch- the same shot exactly. Mm, yes. Yeah, amazing trick shot. Um, <laughs> they had chances. So, you know, it it it. it Klopp was damning in his um, assessment, as you would expect him. But to confused be. at the same time, I think. Yes, I didn't he think was. he just think I, I, he can't be looking at that and sort of going, "Well, this will happen again in mm. the other leg." I mean, it's going to be difficult, but they have beaten them five nil in recent memory. So, like, you do yeah. sort of think that it's still quite di- a dangerous um, tie, isn't it, mm. for, for Atalanta? Uh, yeah, weirdly. but it's weird though that <clears throat> that the second it's not at Anfield. So if they were 3-0 mm. down and they still had Anfield to come, you'd think, mm. well, we've, we've seen this before. Mm. And I don't think the tie is dead mm. because of what Liverpool have done under Klopp. And Atalanta <clears> have been <throat> very good at throwing away advantageous positions this season. For and, worth. and the manager has been very good at throwing away his jacket. Oh, Gian Piero Gasparini. Yeah. Did you see that? He yeah, launched his jacket into the um, to the Liverpool fans. <laughs> no, uh, Ty's dead. Um, yeah. No, he uh, into the... Uh, which was great to see because normally... Well, did someone have a banner up saying... Um, Guess Bruni can have your jacket. Of what, yeah. <laughs> of what use is that to anyone, though? Really? Yeah, because it's, it's quite just, a mild evening. All last it does night. is all it does is serve to upset the, his tailor. Oh, why are you do this? <laughs> oh, why? I work very hard. I work very hard. Forgive us, everybody, for that. What? Um, Not wrong with that. We're all friends. We're all. We're now, all friends. Now we are. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, but, but you're right to say that Klopp was was sort of confused because normally he's much more fiery and annoyed. He, he did sort of just, he did sort of just say, "I I I did." Whoa, wow! I didn't even realise you could do that. Yeah, like, yeah. Play like that. Uh-huh. Did, you did, played did, bad. But then if if it, I mean it is, you know, one less thing to worry about with regards to retiring at the end of the season, isn't it? Right. Okay. What you if know? he just absolutely stacks the well, Europa, no, League. Europa League final? Is- <laughs> Oh, it's one, one, le- one less, one less uh, appointment. Game. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can hit the beach. <laughs> exactly. Wow. He's kind of like, I am annoyed, but then pff, is this the worst thing? <laughs> um, no, it was straight. I think, I think he just knew they were comprehensively beaten. Mm. Whereas normally if they lose well, by the Were they comprehensively goal, beaten, though? Because, I mean, they had a goal ruled... Up. They get had a goal ruled out for offside, which yeah, is so, pretty, so pretty marginal. That, so that doesn't count. And also, they had a lot of chances whacked against the post. Yeah, so I think that's they were comprehensively been... beaten. They weren't played off the park. Yes, I, okay, I, I, right. I, I think you can say that. Yeah. But yeah, the demeanour of Klopp was really the demeanour of the team. I felt mm. so. I, I know it's easy to rewrite history when you know you're with a bit of recency bias. Let's do it. Andy. But it it, mm. it just felt that maybe this was coming because. The game at Manchester United at the weekend, they definitely should have won, by mm. the way. And they just they just took their eye off the ball yes. a little bit. It felt like a, a bit of weariness, a bit of is you've no idea how difficult it is to, to keep this going. Mm. And I, I'm not just talking about this season, but the fact that they've competed with Manchester City at such an incredibly high level for the most part over a number of years, give or take the odd one. And this season But last if, if season was meant to, to be the season off, Andy. No, no, but you go back to the start of this season and you look at the fact that they've completely restructured the midfield, which they desperately needed to do, obviously. But this really should be a transitional season. And Mm. that it's not says so much for Klopp and says so much for those players. 
I think the remarkable thing is not that this has happened, more that this has not happened more, mm. really, when you, when you, mm. you look at this. And I think consistency is the most difficult thing to find in modern football because yeah. there's too much football, because it's incredibly athletic, all those sort of things. And so really, I think Klopp was like a little bit, yeah, well, it's going to happen, isn't it? Yeah. I, you know, I, even, even though there's a feeling that this shouldn't have happened, mm. I, I think for me, there's a feeling that, yeah, fair enough. But fair enough. I don't know if that was his feeling, Andy. I mean, that's not the words coming out of his mouth. I, I just think it was a case of no. But that, that's exactly what he did say. He, he said, well, "I didn't. I didn't think my players were capable of playing like this." Mm. Well, that's I, what he said. Okay, but I, I think his his thinking was more like, you know, we've lost three nil. I'm confused. Obviously, I'm annoyed. But we, this is this is not the time for me to start ranting and raving like he often does, which you would expect. I know. I know he's a sore loser. That that's just the way it is, and as you would expect. A manager like that to be a sore loser. I mean, yeah, that's but, fine. I don't know yeah. any manager there is, but he, he can be particularly mm. these prickly and mm. spiky in, in, in the interviews. Um, but I think you know he will probably also some maybe do a little bit of that to deflect attention or galvanise his play. You know, there's often reasons you think about him as a as a coach in the game that long. Perhaps whereas this, I just think he was like, well, what, what do I do with he, this? Well, he looked he was, blindsided rather yeah, than exactly. having a plan of attack, didn't he? Was, he? Yeah. Yeah, he was as confused as Kamaka uh, <laughs> for his second. Yeah. Where he's like, is that, sorry, is that, was that offside? Because I feel yeah. offside. There was no though. one near me. <laughs> That's, it feels like, like that was an offside trap. <laughs> that seemed to be the easiest thing I've ever done. But he felt duty bound to go over to the fans who were cheering because he can't look at them and go, look guys, you know, I think we've got to wait for VAR on this uh, one. Go, I'll go over here, but I will just keep... Yeah. Keep it in just in case that's chalked off. There was there was a lovely is a is a Ketlara uh, attempting like a back heel in the box. What the, in the back, first half? Yeah, back yeah. to uh, have Coop a Miners. go. Coop Miners. I don't know. It was great because like it went back to Coop, it went to Coop Miners and he was like ah yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah like, <laughs> he just lashed it against someone's well, he was, foot. Uh, I was I really expected you yeah. to shoot that. It was lovely. It was good. It would have been a great setup. It was. A, it was a bizarre. They just did not expect the ball to come, come well, into, their, into their feet. I think. I think they knew they were going to get loads of chances. <laughs> anyway, I'll tell you what. I'll wait for the next yeah. one. But nice to see old uh, Skamaka back in uh, mm. in England. Especially if you're a West Ham fan, thinking, "Oh, there's a lot of permanent transfer money coming." <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> um, well, I mean, it, it's an extraordinary result, as we as we know with Liverpool, the tie isn't dead, mm. um, but it is it is a huge task, of course, and uh, Liverpool. I mean, this is the, this is the last trophy left for Jurgen Klopp to conquer at, at, as Liverpool managers. They've I mean, reached the, the final early on in his time. The uh, thing is, you do think, I don't when, think when, we've, when we've when we've talked about you know the, the, the desire for freshness, the need for for freshness. Yeah. Um, well, it was a fresh trophy. The, the, well, I, th- I think there's there's a question: what teams he pick next week? Yeah, that that I think is is a is the biggest question off the back of this. Can Liverpool do it? Yeah, I do think Liverpool can can go and do it. But do they think, or does Klopp think? Right, it's, it's all in for the league now. Mm. Possibly. Because well, he might he might think that. Well, I think there was, yeah, I mean, he was it's, certainly... It's a question that he never would have thought about attaining before this game. Indeed. But, but now, it must be something that crosses his mind. True. I mean, you look at their fixtures left, you expect them to win them. I mean, to, to go on and win, what would it be, seven games straight, it's very doable, and, and we've seen them do it. Yeah. But it's it would still be a great it's achievement. It's still a big effort. It is, yeah, it, is, it, is. it is. There's no doubt about that. And he was immediately turning his attentions to... Crystal Palace on Sunday, which now feels like it's a huge game, and Palace will be Massive. watching that, thinking, yeah. "Well, I tell you what, boys, you know these. <clears throat> well, for, I mean, there could be a huge reaction, and and, and Liverpool go and, and beat them three or four mm. nil, or they might think themselves they can't score goals. Yeah, well, a, I mean, they can score goals, but they they they're not looking too sharp up front. It's, but it's, they need Mo Salah to click. I know he didn't start the game, but he's not looked quite. At the well, races again, yet. when when we're talking about the team. I think there was a bit of half and halfness to this. Normally, I think maybe that was in Klopp's mind already, actually. He picked a good enough team to win the game. Yeah, he picked a good enough team to win the game. Didn't pick a team that you would pick to win an absolutely crucial game. Mm. You know what I mean? I do, yeah, uh, to, I to, to me, it was a team that you pick to say, okay, we're competitive for this. And you can justify it, as you say, and say, yeah, it's a team that I would expect to win the game. Mm. But it's it's not your 11 that you would absolutely hang your hat on. Yeah. I think it says that our priority is the Premier League. Good news though for Liverpool is that um, Crystal Palace haven't won in their last five mm. and Luton Town have scored a, 
a fair few more goals than them in the league. You know, like if, if Palace don't really score that much and they're not really winning. So Palace are waiting for Andy's favourite, Jonathan David, to uh, arrive. Are they? Their shores. Yeah. Ooh, imagine, John, imagine, John imagine. Dave. John Dave. John, John Dave. Put John Dave in there. <laughs> Dave John. Uh, well, yes. Yeah, so they, they, they've, they've, they've got to sort themselves out for Palace, no doubt about that. Um, staying in, in European competition by Leverkusen to West Ham United. Now. Sickener. Yeah. I know they were all over them, but sickening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 with with uh, Xabi Alonso's by Leverkusen, they love goals towards the end of games. Is that just because mm. teams are just knackered, do you think, Kenny? They're just past them. To <laughs> Don't worry, lads. These will just drop to the floor in a minute. Well, I, I, I think that's maybe part of it. Although the, they, the they, type they, of goals they scored, that was obviously you know set pieces. Yeah, but they, they retain the ball so well and they've got a great bench. I, I, th- I think those are two absolutely huge things. They for, are 42 for games unbeaten season. as well yeah. by Leverkusen. But, but well, the, the, <laughs> the point about... So this, this looks bad on Moyes, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> The, the, the point about West Ham being so close is like they had the perfume in their jacket. They'd maybe half worked the security tag off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They got to the door. They I saw think... the car policeman. <laughs> <laughs> Dropped everything. <laughs> oh, we're going to go away with it. <laughs> yeah. And just the alarm started to go off when they were half a step out the door. Right. Yeah. I think. Yeah. You just got to sprint out, haven't you, Andy? <laughs> you can't touch me. Why are you touching me? Don't touch me. <laughs> I paid for it. I just left the tag on. Yeah. Just how I get my thrills. Um, uh, yeah. I tell you what, Fabi Hanski was in good form, though. He I was. didn't realise he's yeah. 38. Is he? Yeah. That Ooh. seems erroneous. Yeah. <laughs> well, Peter, well, you you talk to let him. Let me have a look. You talk to let him. Let me have a look how close he is to his. Yeah. That, uh, that one checks out. Well done. When's his birthday? 38. Uh, April. He's 39 this month. Well, bugger me. Well, He's 39 in f- six days. Okay, I get on that, Andy. Well, can, he, can he play a midfield or up front for the return leg? It is seems, the question. It seems because obviously, Jared Bowen might not be fit mm. and Lucas Pakatar is suspended. I mean, Pakatar did very well to stay on for the entire game, I, I, I thought. Mm. But obviously, he is an absolutely huge miss. And when you were talking about Moyes before, I think we've mentioned it earlier in the season, but whenever there is judgment on David Moyes, which obviously has to be one or the other, he's he's amazing and people are really unfair to him mm. or he's absolutely terrible and the football's awful. You know, there's never any in between. I think the fact is that if this season's proven anything about West Ham and David Moyes or w- David Moyes' West Ham is that they're just incredibly reliant on a couple of really outstanding players. Mm. Mm. And, you know, Bowen and Pakatar are, are, are the premier of those. Yeah, no, you, you, and, you're and, right. And well, Pakata, kudos, and, kudos chips yeah, in as yeah, well. Yeah, but you, you can, think you can the way stick him in there for sure. The way that Pakatar kind of slows the game down a little bit, it's sometimes a little bit unhelpful to, to the way West Ham play. Is that fair? Yeah, and Tony's like, get it over get the top. Get it over <laughs> the top for crying out loud. Well, I, I think <laughs> it's, it's a question of where you place him, really. Mm. Because if he's in that advanced role, obviously he plays in a deeper role for Brazil and he can do that. Mm. I personally think, having seen a lot of him in club football, when he's got the ball in his own half, I think he's a bit of a liability. Yeah. Oh, he's you want him further up his, yeah. his own goal, goal despite think, so, yeah. the fact that he he has often filled that role for Brazil and 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 done it very well. So yeah, you definitely want him further in, up. In the it pitch. weird how like um, players can play in the same position for club and country, but just excel. Yeah, you Maguire, uh, <laughs> and and excel in one and, and we say Brazil's Harry Maguire. <laughs> yes, I like you it. Heard it first. Get on what, the t-shirt. What did you think of Victor Boniface doing a, a Mohamed Kudus celebration after scoring? When did he, did he improvise there? that? Because he was doing one celebration and then he kind of stumbled, didn't he? Yeah. Quite badly. You know, like when people I think do a, a dig. when people do a knee slide, yeah. and get it wrong. Mm. Mm. I think it could be a dig, Andy. I just think those... Um, Bit of Afcon sledging. Yeah, possibly. You might get yeah. a screw up your bum. Are they... <laughs> Screws in the hoardings, aren't they? Can't oh, they just screw I them down. Sort of stick up. I mean, in the be. 80s, I think that's a real danger. <laughs> yeah, 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 you get a spelk. Mm. <laughs> yeah, oh dear. Mm. Uh, possibly. Well, West Ham do face um, the mighty Fulham on, on Sunday, so another very stern test for them where they will be probably passed to death. Yeah, um, I don't think Fulham are that stern a test at the moment, are they? Do you not think? Yeah, I suppose you're you know you're dealing with the facts. You can prove anything, <laughs> can't you? Um, <laughs> elsewhere, looking, looking at their form. <laughs> uh, elsewhere in the um, Europa League last night, Benfica beat Marseille two one. Mm. Um, oh, Sven Joran Eriksson was the guest of honour at the match. Was given a guard of honour by his former players at half time, which like it's lovely to see. Obviously, the reason for this happening is very, very mm. sad, of course. But it is 
it's quite heartwarming, I think. One. No, it's it's good that people get their flowers while they're still around. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's important, yeah. isn't it? It, it? I mean, it is. Yeah, I think Jim made the point sort of fairly recently. For for, for him, you know, in within the sad, very sad circumstances, of course, to be able to um, go around and get that appreciation and so mm. on is. Mm. is it's lovely. I mean, mm. most people don't get that for you know, for obvious reasons, yeah. but yeah. The thing with Sven Joran Eriksson, he's liked and admired in England. Mm. I think in, increasingly so as there's distance from yes. his tenure in charge of the England team, and you can see it as as an overall yeah. rather than particular bits of it where you can't people dislike the man. But if if he's if he's liked, and I, I think for, with a certain cheekiness in England, yeah. he's admired and adored in large parts of Portugal where, let's be honest, most people support Benfica. Mm. Benfica are absolutely huge there. Former manager, of course. And he was, yeah, in two spells, two very successful spells in the 80s European and, Cup and 90s. Final? European Cup mm. final, 1990. Now, this is the interesting thing because, talking of cheekiness, the last time that Benfica played Marseille mm. in European competition was in the semi-finals in 1990 uh-huh. where Vata famously scored the winner at the Stadio Delusion in the return leg with his hand. Yeah. Right. And, um, it's unlike Ma- Marseille Ma- to be on the end of a Marse- cheating uh, <laughs> moment in the European Cup. They're, they're, still, they're still pretty sore about that. Yeah, but, good. But, but ob- obviously... Got their own back, though. Um, Sven Joran Eriksson is an absolute, undisputable Benfica great. And it was brilliant. When they had this guard of honour, yeah. you had a load of his former players, whether they were from the early 80s generation mm. or the late 80s generation, they were wearing replicas of the shirts that nice. they oh, used to wear at the time. Uh, it They're was just like a... retro f- football beauty. And of course, the current president of Benfica, Rui Costa. Oh, and comes like, out and gives him a big hug and it's like, yes, it's just like designed to get me on a hangover. It's like properly. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. Uh, was the, Mr. Yeah. Pigden. Oh, God. <laughs> right inside. Oh, delightful. Delightful. Uh, right, let's come back to England. Aston Villa 2, Lille 1 in the Europa mm. Conference League. Quite nervy for Villa. Yeah. Quite nervy. I mean, Martinez was in good form and needed to be. Lille will be disappointed that they lost the game quite frankly, because mm. uh, they had their chances. Well, they're a good side. and I, I, Are they better than Villa? Is it, I, I, I tell you what, I, I don't know if they're better than Villa. They're in, I would say, maybe better form than Villa at the moment. Villa have got a lot more money though, Andy. <laughs> yeah, yeah they, they, do. they do. And, you know, that's a that's a massive deal. But William and they George are... go to Villa matches. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they, that's true. They are, like Villa, impeccably coached by Paolo Fonseca. Paolo Fonseca has been linked with a lot yeah. of Premier League jobs, not just in the past, but for next season, of mm-hmm. course, as, as well. It's going to be a really interesting um, second leg. And I, I did say before this was drawn, like forget like the glamour of the name. This is such a more difficult tie than yeah. the one they had against Ajax, mm. who they are so much better than Villa than the, the, this, you know, embarrassing really. Mm. But this one, when once they got themselves 2 nil up, you thought, oh, they've got themselves in a great position there. Yeah. Mm. So you, you're right to say it could have been worse for Villa. They've done well to, uh, to, from a certain point of view to get out of it with the win. I thought they deserved it, actually, for the way they attacked it for the first hour. But if they have got through it without conceding that goal to Diakite, I, th- I think it would be so much more comfortable. This has totally opened it up for, for the second leg. Mm. Uh, yes, you're, you're absolutely Villa in a funny sort of patch of form um, recently. It's, well, since since the turn of the year, they, they've not been nearly as impressive as they were last calendar Which year. makes mm. sense because when we see a, a side like this, usually, um, you know, out with the Leicester City example, usually, you know, the first half of the season where they're very impressive and it's surprised a fair few people and you think, my goodness, you know, and there's even like a, a, a cheeky little nod and wink to a title race and so on. And then the second half of the season, you know, it begins to catch up. And of course, the consistency mm. of the other sides around them and so on is, is very difficult to find. They'll be disappointed, though, if they don't go on into the semis and then in the final. This yeah, competition. I mean, they've been the favourites for this competition for a long, long time. But um, you, you're right to say that. I think the 2023 numbers for Villa... They're extraordinary, mm. and they're also completely unsustainable. Yeah. And I think you have to you have to be realistic about that. Yeah. They are still a developing team under Unai Emery. Did yeah. You see, did you see uh, John Dur- Duran's? Uh, he crashed his uh, really expensive BMW. Oh no! Hours before this match, so that might have uh, he did come on. I think so. Mm. Um, that might have played into it. Did you see? Did you see that? Um, there's a YouTuber restoring Marcus Rashford's write off. Really? I watch a lot of car YouTube now because oh, I've become to that, that in, sort of age. Is this 
could a we problem. Call- yeah, could we call it? <laughs> I wasn't going to go there yet. Mm. Uh, could we call it a midlife crisis? Was well, is, is it a crisis that started? One man's in crisis, your 20s? another one's yeah, lovely exactly. old job. It's a slow. Yeah. I'm turning into the slide. I think that's what it's called, really. Okay. But yeah, yeah. Um, I watch. I watch the guy who restores football shirts. That's my midlife crisis. How does he do that? So oh, it's, different it's, kinds of. It's it's amazing. Like people who've had, you know, where the the name and number of of, of, of faded, mm. and um, like he sort of cleans it all off. And then gets a, a beautiful new mm. like name and number, and the, I, I, honestly, it's a bit a, a ASMR. ASMR. The, like when, <laughs> the sound when, when of he the like, film, oh, yeah. when he peels the film off oh. the back, it's it's amazing. I've got, it's I've amazing. got a Yokohama Flugels uh, shirt where all of, of the um, where all of the um, lettering has fallen off. Could he restore that? Send it to OJ. He'll yeah. sort it out. Oh, yeah. Right. Send yeah. it to who? OJ, I think his name is. Oh, Today of all days. Today of all days, Andy. <laughs> Good God. Dear me. <laughs> uh, where were we? Aston yeah. Villa. Aston Villa, yeah. I mean, they, they haven't won a trophy for a while. Not since the, the major trophy. Since, I think, the 90s. So, mm. there's a chance. Get there's a chance. And, Get a new and, banner opposite the whole end. And when John McGinn's if passing they, them in like that. Line. Did you see um, on the BBC, Tom Kearney was talking about the size of John McGinn's bum bum. What is, uh, is it... Um... Just Jealous. Saying that, just mm. saying that, that when it's in full force, it's like you just can't <laughs> get. Force. You cannot get near him. You know. <laughs> well, I mean, you, you you are near him, of course. In fact, maybe he gets nearer. He's trying to, to get you. get past him in the lunch. You line. can't get it's the impossible. ball. Yeah. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's it has been noted. I know Vish is a fan of his um, mm. of, of John McGinn's. As a, as a man with no, we had, we had a photo shoot um, this week. The lot of us, didn't we? And uh, uh, people were remarking on the. the yeah, the, we're very vain. We always have a photo shoot invi- once every few months. <laughs> how how little my little boy's bum is, and I would just love a big old bum. Would you? Yeah, just would for you a do, bit. What would you do with it? Just push it into people's faces. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness Throw you don't have it. Around. This is why the good know. Lord never gave you one. <laughs> Give me, you, have you. a word upstairs. I want to wake up tomorrow morning like a kind of Tom Hanks. I want to be big. I want my bum. I want my bum to be big, Marcus. I'm not going to um, endorse that. Is this going to be your... Sell your keys to the weekend, innit? <laughs> is this going to be your... <laughs> Is this going to be your surgery in Turkey 50th birthday? Yeah, oh. turkey ass. Give me a turkey ass. I'm surprised you haven't actually thought about that. Right. Mm. What, get again? <laughs> you go and get your implants. It would look bum. wonderful. I Do you know wait. what? I'd love to see that. Yeah. In Pete's all its bum. glory. Put your money where your mouth is, guys. Okay. Get him out to Istanbul, Andy. Start <laughs> just, <laughs> just Let him talk to some of your people. Because you go out there quite a bit. And you certainly come back with uh, different features every time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, before we move on, Marcus, we yes. have to talk about um, Lille's manager, pa- Paolo Fonseca, uh, buying claws for one of his footballers. Well, this is if they beat Marseille, he said he would yeah, do if this. They, if, yeah, if, if they beat Marseille, mm. um, Edun Zagrova, um, he, 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 well, he took him shopping to where, get some new claws. It was like Pretty Woman, was it? <laughs> <laughs> it was like... It was lovely stuff, and I just think that... Did, he, did, did Big Ed on take off a w- wig at some point and go, red? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or big mistake. Or, no, red. Big was, mistake. Yeah. Well, uh, Jose Mourinho did that before, didn't he? What, took a wig off? He, t- <laughs> he took um, one of his players a trainer shopping, didn't he, after he, after he scored but, for him? Yeah, I just think it's a bit why kinky. Was this big, why was this big... I mean, well, pretty well, I just, I'm just saying, I just, I just can't imagine Unai Emery just taking, uh-huh. I don't know... Neil Warnock. Yuri Tillemans out for an evening jacket. <laughs> <laughs> what did he? What did he buy him? Or it was just it, like trainers it? and a shirt, and and the, and the player Zagrova basically turned the camera and goes, "I feel like a manager." <laughs> so it's so, uh, don't like it. He's don't a care bit, for it. He's a bit naughty. Zagrova's uh, st- st- sticking on a, a tasteless D squared and going, <laughs> "I'll be, I'll be wearing this pre-match at a, <laughs> a mid-table Premier League club next season." Oh my goodness! Well, he'd be, he'd be very, he'd be very welcome, I'm sure. Andy, <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. Let's uh, talk about uh, Arsenal hosting this Aston Villa team on Sunday at 4:30. It's the Unai Emery derby. It's the Emmy mm. Martinez. Derby, there's probably one or two others that I can't be bothered mentioning. Uh, but uh, can Unai do it? Andy Villa, not in great form, as, mm. as we know, although they did get their victory last night. Um, it's a tall order, though. Go to the Emirates these days. Yeah, I feel Arsenal will run past them pretty easily. Especially um, with a Thursday night fixture as well. Yeah, yeah I, exactly. No, I, 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 I do so understand. Much in. The, the, the narrative of Emery going there and scuppering Arsenal's title bid yeah. would be a lot more vivid at another point in the season where Villa looked a little bit more energetic. Mm. I mean, and I last suppose, season as well. A bit more yeah. of a test, but this, this might, you know, they might take their eye of the ball. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Arsenal Villa gets in. Yeah. I, I think, I think um, the, you know, form and, and 
the, the course Personnel of the show. Yeah, exactly. Situation, everything and, suggests and stakes, yes, and history, <laughs> uh-huh. and uh, performance, Indeed. and yeah, and air miles, the, and air miles as well <laughs> uh, would suggest that Arsenal are going to win this one. I mean, obviously, Arsenal played Bayern um, this week with two days extra rest. Yeah, mm. but it's interesting what you said about Klopp. You know, does he go all in the league um, now with with regards to the Europa? I, I I strongly suspect, you know, with Arsenal, Arteta is doing what what Klopp would normally do. And Guardiola in Ooh. that right, we are going on all fronts, right, and, yeah, yeah. you know, equally. Um, I, suspect... I, th- I think Europa League kind of clouds your judgment when it comes to that. Doesn't well, it? it does a little bit, bit especially yeah. if you've been beaten 3-0 as well. Yeah. I think though that a league title is more important to Arsenal than a Champions League win. Well, especially because they look a bit green in the Champions League as well. Yeah, you know, and you sort of go, well, look, they feel what, more realistic. You mean, yeah. Yeah. You, yeah, they, they nearly they, got there last time. They the don't. League. They don't have to play Manchester City again in the Premier League. All right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They, they and they'll never have to play Real we'll Madrid. Have, we'll have a proper champ- crack at the Champions League in next the Premier season. League. Yeah. yeah, I think. I think you're right. I, I think. I think that's what it is. You know. Um, I, I can't see him resting players mm. in this game. No. I can't see him resting players against Bayern. To be to be quite frank, I mean, either. The, the, the one guarantee Arsenal have got going into this next week, which is obviously crucial for them this next week, week and a half. It's all crucial, but I, th- I think, you know, there's there are moments of truth in this next week or so. The one thing they can guarantee, mm. is, almost guarantee, is that they are going to face a really quite pumped Bayern yes. next mm. week. Not just because they're at home, not just because it's the Allianz Arena, not just because... Um, Bayern have, have had a difficult season. Well, so this is what they're, 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 all their chips are in this. But this this weekend is probably the weekend that Leverkusen are going to win the league. Right. So yeah. Leverkusen they need a response. Leverkusen are playing the late game against uh, Werder Bremen on Sunday. If they win that, regardless of what Bayern do this weekend, mm-hmm. and if I was Thomas Tuchel, I'd rest everyone this weekend right. because it's, it's it's done anyway. They are going to feel so pissed off about having lost the league. Because uh-huh. obviously I've known it's happening for weeks, but the moment where, for the first time in twelve years, you're the team, you're the coach, you're the players who've not won Bayern the title. There's got to be a reaction that, for that. Yeah, that there has, has to, be. to be. Yeah, no, I, mm. all agreed, all agreed. All right, everybody. Before we go uh, for a break, a reminder that you can sign up for. The Football Ramble patron for as little as $5 a month. You'll get ad-free episodes of the Ramble OTC and up front as well as an extended version of every Wednesday Ramble and access to our Discord server. On the Discord this week, the Ramble patrons were talking about the new Livingston Stadium sponsor, which is a beauty. Um, It was known as the Tony Macaroni and yesterday it was announced that it will become the home of the Set Fair Arena next season, named after a cab firm called Set Fair. So, before the nickname was uh, the Spaghetti Had, uh, some suggestions <laughs> are now the New Cab, uh, mm. Stadio Olympic Up, and the Mirror Signal Iduna Park. <laughs> so, some good ones there, uh, everybody. So, for more scintillating banter like that, head to patreon.com forward slash football ramble. Sign up for just five dollars a month coming up in the second half we've got Newcastle versus Spurs Newcastle quite clearly trying to mug off at Mike Ashley Forest v Wolves and and something positive about Portsmouth oh see you in a moment I'm going messing this right because he, he hates when people leave stuff about and he goes come on man like that <laughs> and the fact that I don't moisturise my knees oh. he hates that you got to moisturise. I, I, I yeah, you know like, I mean? just got to moisturise. If it's dry, you just got to put a bit of cream can't on. Can't put, can't put cocoa butter on a guy from Clyde Bank, you know what I mean? <laughs> you can't put a cocoa butter on a guy from Clyde Bank. I tell you what, as products go, Andy, I mean, cocoa butter's got to be the most successful product that's ever lived. Like, it's been going longer than Coke. It started earlier, right. in early 19th century, um, when they discovered the, the, the cocoa press, and it's just never... Where's the new cocoa butter coming from? Why do, why do you For need the it? Paw Patrol generation. You don't, <laughs> you don't need it new if it's still good. Yeah, but, like, there must be, like... Why didn't we never see a cocoa butter 2000? Is it, why did we never see anything that's been updated? Did you suggest that it was the most successful product ever? It's got to be. Even more than just butter? Well, it's not technically even butter, is it? Yeah. yeah, I just wanted to throw that in. Yeah, but like this cocoa butter is just. <laughs> I thought it was just a one what about brand. Chips. Everyone loves <laughs> chips. <laughs> Especially John McGinn, who was talking right. about uh, cocoa butter there uh, with uh, Ollie Watkins. Put it on your chips. Yeah, chips. Chips. Oh, dear. Right. Andy, your local team, Newcastle United. And Pete, your beloved team, Newcastle oh. United. He's a bit beloved to Andy. Uh, he can't stand would've, them. Would have been. He hates going there. <laughs> 
A lot um, of them would have been good. Sweating, but it walk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, yeah. Uh, they are playing Tottenham Hotter Spur mm. on Saturday at twelve thirty. They get the Premier League underway on the weekend. It's a curtain raiser. Of it the is. Premier I like uh, it. Yeah. Of the Premier League's weekend Negotiating action. Negotiating with my partner. We can watch it. <laughs> is that right? Well, it's uh, almost a year since Newcastle beat Spurs 6-1 at St. James's Park mm. with uh, Spurs conceding five goals in the first 21 minutes. Oh, that still we... seems like a dream, doesn't it? Lest yeah. we forget everybody. I can't believe it was... I can't... It feels like a lot longer. Well, there was oh, another one, wasn't there? Yeah. Was it a 6-1 or a 5-1? Remember on the last day of the mm. season? Rafa Benitez, wasn't mm. it? Rafa Benitez. Mm. Yeah. When they were already relegated. Newcastle. Yeah, that's, mm. that, that's, that's right. Yeah. Where Spurs famously came third in a two-horse race. That's right. For, for, <laughs> that for, for, is the, right. The Premier League. I, mean, I suppose the advantage for this one with this World 30 kickoff on Saturday, if something similar were to happen mm. in this game, then, you know, those Spurs fans could be... Back in N17, having a great Saturday night. Do you think yeah. that's why they nice brought the early. fixture a little Maybe. bit early? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. That I mean, would be such a great Villa reason. Have, Villa have said there's no consideration with the Premier League and their scheduling. Well, I beg to differ. Yeah. Exactly. We often say the Premier League you don't the, care about hear, the fans. Yeah, you never well, hear the good are. news, do you? <laughs> about transport. <laughs> no, exactly. Yeah. Good I stuff. I, don't I mean, know. you're I, I, still thinking about Thursday night European massive European <laughs> game playing Arsenal away at the weekend, aren't you? I on know. Sunday, I'm still thinking about that Christmas Eve fixture, Andy. To be honest with yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Um, but no, the Premier League have got it right this time, mm. and I applaud them quite frankly. I mean, it's, it's not going to be that. It might be in the reverse because Newcastle are walking wounded, but yeah, mm. it's. Uh, I don't think it's going to be quite so goally. Bruno Guimaraes should play. He, he should play. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> have you heard about the bizarre situation that he's in? Mm. There's a little Premier League loophole here. He's picked up nine yellow cards this season. Now, if he gets one more within 32 games within the season, and this is Newcastle's 32nd game, he'll be banned for the next two games. Mm. However, if he picks up two yellow cards in this game and therefore gets sent off, that will mean he only gets a one-game suspension. Yeah. Now, I mean, it's, 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 if you asked Alexa to describe Chekhov's gun in football, <laughs> that's is very much what what we're looking at here. Well, right? I mean, it's not as loopholey as people may. Bruno's think. gonna get ya, <laughs> Basuma. Bruno's gonna get ya. <laughs> so the next threshold is fifteen yellows from the thirty-eight fixtures. Right. And if you were to achieve, yes, achieve yeah. that then you'd get a three-match ban, but no one has ever done that. So, okay. Bruno, well, look, put it breaking, to you. <laughs> breaking records. Yeah. Come on, Bruno. Exactly. I mean, he has suffered a little bit from <laughs> Joe Linson not being there to smash people on his behalf. Yeah, exactly. A little they, bit. You can't rotate the, the fouls. True. Although no. Joe Linson, speaking of him, he signed a new long-term deal uh, with the club yesterday, which is lovely to see. It's not. It wasn't that long ago where he was being derided by those Newcastle United I mean, fans. The, the prime beneficiary, I suppose, of the... Eddie Howe effect. Mm. Indeed. It's, you know, a little bit deeper. And my goodness. Would you say he's loved by the fans, Andy? Adored. Yeah. yeah. Because I think it's that player who didn't start very well and then suddenly becomes quite an important player for the club. Yeah, and I think... But and he that's tries... a decade of good management. So yes. Going, yes, just give us a good manager yeah. and we'll have a nicer time. Well, I think sometimes people... I know this season's been a little bit Jekyll and Hyde and, again, the injuries have been so prevalent. I know every side has them, but they have been particularly... Um, badly um, dealt with, uh, you know, had a particularly bad hand with that. But, you know, Howe has done a pretty good job. I mean, there's Great no job. ways about that. I mean, Great I know job. at the start, when was it now? I can't remember when we go back. Perhaps at the start of the year, certainly a number of months ago, we were thinking, is his job in danger? You know, people were beginning to ask questions there. And that was more indicative that, of... That was, that was outside the club and outside the city. But that's more indicative of... Uh, what we think nowadays of a big money owners coming in and wanting success and wanting kind of um, uh, you know trophies and 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 just you know win at all costs that kind yeah, of yeah that's thing. I think that was all projection to be mm. honest because the reality is what he has done Eddie Howe is is he's absolutely transformed this team and when you think of this season when you think of the unexpected qualification for the Champions League and the demands that brings mm. when you think of the injuries all these com- so some foreseeable and some complete unforeseeables. And yet, they're still in there with a really great chance of, of qualifying mm. for Europe. Even I reckon even if they get a conference league place, that is an enormous triumph. Hugely. Yeah. It was just, I mean, yeah, obviously it was a shame how the Champions League campaign ended, but <gasps> the fact is they were still alive with the last game in a very difficult group. Yeah, but, and do, yeah. do you know what? They kind of kippered themselves by being a bit too ambitious, by yeah. going for it. If they'd have if they'd have tried to hold on to the one one against Milan on match day six, then they're in the Europa League and maybe we're talking about them in the first section of the show. Maybe we are, Andy. Maybe yeah. maybe we are. Their opponents, Tottenham Hotspur, 
are obviously gunning for Champions League um, next season, uh, of course. Um, and they're in pole position now, above Aston Villa, just about on goal difference, and have that extra game in hand. They've been on a pretty good run of late, you would you would have to say. Um, Mickey van der Ven uh, has been... Um, old speedy Mickey uh, has been a new... So how do you think he's done so far, Andy? Great. Van der Ven. Re- really, <laughs> really good. And it was always clear that him and Romero would be quite complementary. Yeah. I think because... Romero is the just hunter. Yes. And whereas is he, he the gatherer? Mm. Yeah, yeah. I'll get the ball. Well, well I think I think he is. Mm. He is. He's, he's he's got the he's got the speed, as you say, to 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 cover for his um you know impulses. Well, it's interesting like. that Romero is the hunter because old Mickey's father was apparently an undercover cop back right. in his home country, and is now the lead detective on the Dutch version of the TV show Hunted. Wow. How about that? I mean, it's. It's good stuff, in it? It it's is. exactly what you need. Yeah, he said his dad's advice for football has always been to accept everything that's going on around you because it's going to happen and you can't do anything about it. It's what I've done, said Mickey. I know it's going to be chaos, but just do your job. You see that quote from his dad? <laughs> do you want... That seems no. to... That seems to totally... If you'd have said... If Harry Maguire said that... if Oh, yeah, and, if you, you'd, and you'd be like, I've just done a team talk and that's what you're taking away from it. <laughs> I want you to control right. again, please. If, if so you say it's going to be chaos and I've just got to deal with it. Great. All right. If you'd have said, his dad said, this is what playing with Christian Romero is going to be like, <laughs> you would believe yeah, that, wouldn't that you? That's yeah. it. Maybe, Word for word. Maybe that's it. Maybe <laughs> that is it. Now, uh, Newcastle United have proposed to sell next season's shirts exclusively through JD Sports. I love it. Sports director said the deal is unlawful. And now Mike <laughs> Ashley is suing his old club. <laughs> Coming for a, from a fucking slum shitlord, Mike Ashley. Good I love God. I just it is so, the owners when you, when you, the owners have played a blinder yeah, at yeah. Newcastle United now we know look, we've talked about the owners and where the money's from and all that kind of stuff and we still have our thoughts on that of course but if you really want to uh, endear yourself to the fans you know certain things in the playbook and it's like and let's do this. When, they will bloody, uh, they when Mike, get, when they Mike will actually owned this. the bloody club, he couldn't buy a Newcastle shirt in 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 anywhere else in Sports Direct. You just couldn't. Like, you mean, uh, I, no, you could. You could surely. Yeah, I don't know. Not not in my experience. I know you don't shop at Sports Direct because you got your mug and you're happy with it. <laughs> um, but it is. I mean, yeah, he, they are very very unhappy. Uh, but see, they, most most, most of most of us can fit our fist in that mug. Pete can actually fit his bum in there. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's Take, true. Have a little bath. <laughs> little, little, it's like a bee day for you, isn't it? It is. Um, a little dip. But, uh, <laughs> uh, where, but I mean, there are other sides that have got exclusive deals with JD. It was like huge. Like, I think Leeds United do, but, Leicester and, and Celtic for crying out Yeah, they're a big uh, sleeve sponsor now for not just English teams, but a lot of teams across uh, Europe, particularly in Spain. Just get mm. off JD Sports back. <laughs> hey. What does it stand for? I don't know. Don't they call Chuck straps. D- uh, d- Deluxe. D- Delight. Delight. D- what? D- Deluxe. Deluxe. Yeah. Chuck Straps Deluxe. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Um, don't uh, don't they call themselves King of Trainers or some crap yes. like that? Yes. Right. They're the King of Trainers. That's a poor tagline because they've, bran- they've branched out. <laughs> you know, you get, you get more in there, presumably. Um, but if it's annoying Mike Ashley, then... We're all yeah, for it. We're, we're, yeah. It is funny. Mm, there's there's yeah. no two ways about that. There is no two ways... I have to appreciate it. Um, ...about that. Nottingham Forest play Wolves at 3pm on Saturday. Uh, Forest certainly need uh, a victory in their uh, situation. Uh, but if, they've got to beat Wolves. They have mm. to beat Wolverhampton Wanderers, who by and large have um, impressed us, I think, this season. Although, I mean, a bit of a mixed bag of late, but I mean, that's, you know, they're a mid-table side, so that's to be expected. Uh, Gary O'Neill has been charged, though, by the FA with improper and or threatening behaviour. Make up your mind, FA, uh, after <laughs> Wolves' 2-1 defeat against West Ham last Saturday. Are we surprised by that? Well, I think... Because, it, of, the, because of the way that he was behaving in the pre-match interviews? And I'm, then... I'm surprised it's taken this long. Yeah. Because he has been... You know they've they've been on the end of some bad decisions. Although, do you think maybe the press reminding him of that has kind of caused <laughs> but this? I do think the way that he talked about that afterwards kind of informed the way that people reacted to it yeah. because the way that he framed it is that if you think this was the right decision, you know absolutely nothing about football. Mm. So that say that to his face, Andy. So that kind of yeah. So that basically made everyone fall in line and go, well, I don't want to look like I, I know nothing about football. So I'm not going to appreciate that, you know, maybe it's a debatable decision mm. or maybe it's something we can discuss. And everyone fell into line with his view of it. 
Well, this which is... I, I think was a point of view, but it's not a completely incontrovertible. You can't disagree with it. Point of view. Yeah, I, this this was to do with the late equaliser being disallowed after Max Kilman's. Yeah, yeah, it was mm-hmm. just to be stood in an offside position, obstructing uh, Fabianski's view against West Ham uh, in their in their previous game. Uh, yeah, I mean, he was ordered out of the referee's room when he when he sought an explanation. A lot, lot of referee room action in this. I know. Uh, what you, in this were they eating season. sandwiches? That's well, what that's we what I mean. Yeah, I was thinking whether well, it was a mm. big um, subway sandwich platter on the go. <laughs> Well, uh, if you are Gary O'Neill, then you will be pleased to hear that semi-automated technology is to be introduced for the first time next season in the Premier League. The clubs unanimously agreed to it yesterday, and it should be introduced after one of the international breaks in September or November. So basically, so, two gonna, years time, two years time, Andy. They're, they're going to introduce it after the season's actually started. Of course, what's wrong with what that? that? Why yeah, would that? So, then some, so there's some clubs get to experience it, yeah. and others don't. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Be, you know. <laughs> it'll be used at Old Trafford <laughs> yet ahead that's a <laughs> percentage field. of FA Cup fixtures yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, it'll be used to yeah, help good, out good. Um, the top team's back lines <laughs> so the, the Australia traps will be how up. would this have changed this decision uh, well I don't know Andy but it would it'll certainly cut time for offsides uh, being called on VAR down now by, that, that is positive by an average 30 seconds that is positive. That, that, I mean, that is positive, isn't it? I think it? that is positive, although I think fans probably were wanting to hear like two minutes or something, but, you know... Well, especially because that. like, especially because a lot of offside decisions are, are quite clear. Mm-hmm. Um, 99% of them. Well, they're binary, aren't they? Oh, the offside. Yeah. It's just exactly. where, where, where do you draw the line? Is it the toenail or is it mm. the elbow or, or uh, something You, you see, there we go. And this is always going to be the problem when it comes to the Premier League and VAR. We need to feel that it's not like the binary correct decision, but the, the, the decision that we feel comfortable with, yes. that we feel preserves the spirit mm. of the game. It's just like, come on, man. Like there's other things to moan about VAR about. True, but Andy. we spend so much time discussing actually correct decisions. Well, I like... Do you, do you ever cut it? When, when your team is called offside, mm. my reaction is always, oh, that's unlucky rather than, oh, that was never offside. Because it's, mm. such, a, it's such a binary decision, like yeah, you say, and they study them now. So... Yeah, it's no, always I, correct in the Premier League. I do agree with you. But I think the, the other thing about semi-automated technology is a couple of leagues have held off it because it's just quite expensive. Right. Yeah, it's I mean, surprisingly expensive. Well, it is used in the Champions League and Serie A and, of course, has been used in uh, a, a few uh, World Cups of late. Mm. Uh, certainly the women's and uh, in Qatar it was uh, used. And I love the crash test dummy element to it as, as well. Really? The graphic. Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> <laughs> Mm, 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 is what I would say to that, Andy. <laughs> oh Very subtle reference there for nineties uh, sort of um, was it dad rock. One hit stuff? wonders. One hit wonders. Let's leave it at one grunge. hit wonders. It's quite grungy, wasn't there's it? Nothing shit about that track, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say there's nothing grunge about that track. No, it's true. If you're not sure what we're talking about, just you're YouTube crash test. You're allowed dummies. a bit of piano in a grunge song, aren't you? I, I mean, I've, I've campaigned everyone many in times. the 90s. <laughs> everyone sang like this, and that's how they sang. So it's a grunge track <laughs> with arms wide open. That's a different band, <laughs> um, right? Uh, oh, more admin stuff here, everybody. It looks like Sheffield United are going to become the latest club to be hit with a points deduction. Oh, whenever they return to the championship, when could that be? <laughs> whenever they'll be deducted two points by the EFL, with a further two points suspended for charges relating to the 2022. 2022- 23 season I love that imagine we're imagine, just waiting yeah. for you that deduction's waiting for yeah. you, in inter- you survive this season it'll be there next season you can't <laughs> get us we're in international waters <laughs> imagine if they we're never Premier go League down waters. imagine if they never go down it'd be so funny they use this to kind of stay yeah, away exactly and in years to come it, it'll be like a quiz question which pre- which is the only Premier League side never to be relegated in the last 50 years <laughs> but I'm quite sure that they will go down yeah. within the next 50 mm, years that's yes. certainly something that mm. we can all uh, agree on but speaking of relegation and promotion. The two go hand in hand. Yeah. Um, bloody hell. Portsmouth could be promoted back to the championship for the first time since 2012 on Saturday. Tomorrow. Huge. It's I mean, remarkable that, reversing up like to that. the Pompey Highway. Up the Luke Pompey Moore's Highway. relevancy has never been higher. I know. Uh, it's... It... <laughs> <laughs> What about that time he was on that controversial news channel? Um, <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, Portsmouth. I mean, obviously, um, Luke to, coined the, 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 the phrase which I've never heard outside of a ramble studio, the Pompey Highway, mm. when, of course, they went from the Premier League all the way down um, the leagues. Uh, well, I mean, they, they didn't go all the way down, but they, they got relegated, you know, at least a couple of times, didn't they? Um, but here they are uh, on the it's verge huge. of being back in the championship. I mean, the size of the club and the fan base, 
they are a championship club at least. And it's so. amazing that they haven't been in the championship for over a decade. That amazing. is amazing. That is incredible, yeah. I mean, when I say at least a championship club, they're one of those sides who, if they go up to the Premier League, which of course we have seen them in, in recent memory, then it's kind of like, all oh, right, we're one of the clubs that are just l- love being here. We'll see how we get on. You know, it's a Fulham kind of business. Well, indeed, there's loads yeah. of clubs, loads of clubs. You know, you yeah, look at the yeah. Premier League table, you could make an argument for these maybe 10, 11 teams you think we're bona fide Premier League sides. You know, Leeds obviously not in it this season, do they yeah. would sort of suggest it. Mm. But, uh, you know, in, a, in quite a big bag, uh, a bag, a bag. That's nice to haves. <laughs> you know what I mean, Peter. You know exactly <laughs> what I mean. So, yes, if they beat Bolton, who are third on 81 points, they can't be caught and will be League One champions with three games to spare. It'd be quite a stylish way to do it, wouldn't it's it? Very stylish. You want to win the league title. Mm. Take it from Come on. Take it from fans who have won uh, <laughs> league, uh, league uh, a football league title. Championship league title. It is lovely, isn't it? Does it, it, it even count lovely. if you haven't got Fabrizio Colaccini or Tom Kenny in the Exactly. Lineup? Well, that's a debate for another day. Okay. <laughs> well, it's not a debate, is it? Uh, well, I think it is, Andy. <laughs> there are some people out there who don't believe. And uh, more's the pity, I uh, should say. Dean Smith also says you're an encyclopedia of football. A what? An encyclopedia of football. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know what that means for crying out loud. It's time for uh, Jackson Cyclopedia. Uh, and I'm Pete Donaldson, the host for this week. Welcome. <laughs> well, well, you are welcome to it. Hey, Petey. Yeah, it's 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 a game of uh, just talking about stuff. And if, yeah. if you if you talk if you, if you wait too long to talk about something, uh, you're going to hear um, uh, the, the noise of Gary Neville's orgasm. So just watch out. All right. Watch out. I will. All right. Uh, are you guys ready? We're going to kick things off with you, Marcus, with the first uh, the first one. Um, Vish does have the lineal belt, but he obviously can't defend it now. Uh, Luke defeated Marcus last week, so mm. let's see if you guys can... Um, I'm on a stinking run. I'm a on a bit. stinking run, I'm on a... You're on a stinking run, are you? Yeah, yeah but I, I'm the worst at this. Mm. Uh, uh, it's, mind it's, games. Mind games. Mind games. It's, it's weird because, you know, that... Funky music should fill me with joy. Yeah. Funky music. Because you're, you're the funky, funky music. music. Play that funky music. <laughs> <laughs> you like that from Two Unlimited. <laughs> the Dutch star. You see that? Maybe that would change my luck in this game. Yeah. Yeah. A bit, 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 bit Euro dance for next week's uh, theme. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, kick things off with you, Marcus. Um, I want. I want. Every club mascot in the Premier League oh. this season. Oh, for fuck's sake! I need the Come mascot. On. And I need the club. Not just what kind of animal it is. I need the name of the mascot. There are 19 answers because sadly, one club doesn't have a mascot. Oh, yes. (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. I'll go for a (laughs) gunosaurus. Some would say shooting first is a bit of yeah, an advantage. Yeah. The, in this only, one. the only time yeah. that noise is never going to be heard again in this round, I think. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what have you got, Andy? I'm going to go for Wolfie the Wolf's Wolf. I mean, it's a fair bet. It, it? is Wolfie yeah. the Wolf's and Wendy Wolf as well. Let's not forget yeah. Wendy Wolf. He's oh, still getting it. That, that's fine. Yeah. There's a Wendy Wolf. Billy the Badger at Fulham. Oh! oh. Is that right? Billy is that the right? Badger I've got that right? at Fulham. You've got that right. Yes. Correct. You've got that right. Stamford the Lion at Chelsea. Oh, bugger off. Oh, nice. How's he pulled that out of the bag? I know. Come on. I thought, I thought with with two correct answers, I should win this round. He's quite a well-known one. Come on. Yeah, yeah, correct. There is a uh, Bridget the Lion as well. Okay. Give myself that. (laughs) Right. Right. Okay, okay. Okay. So, an answer. An answer. (laughs) (laughs) Um... uh, I'm giving you a little bit more leeway. It's Torres oh! to give Chelsea a place in the Champions League. Um, Maggie the Magpie at Newcastle. <laughs> I, I mean, we do have a magpie, obviously, but um, yeah. it is Monty Magpie. Oh, so Monty the Magpie. Yeah, Monty the Magpie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I probably would have got that, but nothing more than that, I would yeah. say. Andy? Hands, up, hands up if you gutted that Swansea got relegated. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, this is a tough one. It is, isn't it? it is. All right, I'm going to try and guess the name of the devil at Man United. <laughs> oh, yeah, that went through my head. That went through my head. Is he cool? I would, if I was going to name him, I would call him Fred the Red. Shut up. Yes! Oh! Andy Brown. Well allow, allow, allow me, Jude Bellingham. Well played. Well, I, I have Beautifully have, played. Do you know what? Yeah. I thought about the Red Devil and I was like, Ronnie the Red Devil. Ronnie nah, the Red. That's definitely not it. Yeah. So Ronnie who, Redford. Who are the rest? Who are the rest? Uh, we got Do Cherry. we have to? Do we have to? They're disgusting. Yeah, we I mean, they're all just disgusting. Um, <laughs> 
I mean, Liverpool Mighty Red is absolutely. I mean, it it looks like a lobster. Yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, I guess it is a lobster, is it? Sure, I don't, yeah, it's kind no. of a. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, it's a liver bird. Yeah, sorry, that makes more sense. Um obviously uh Moonchester, the Manchester City oh, uh, yeah, thing is an, yeah, is an absolute uh, weird sort of alien looking thing. Uh you have got Fred the Red, which is a sort of bear, I think. Like mm. a bear devil. Um yeah, Monty Magpie at Newcastle, um Sheffield United Captain Blade, he's a pirate. Uh, okay. shouldn't really be endorsing or glorifying that. Um <laughs> Chirpy at Tottenham uh, Hotspur, he's he's also a, a horrific looking bird. Uh, Hammerhead looks like a weird kind of Iron Man. So costume. I knew it was a yeah. hammer thing, but I yeah. didn't get the name. Disgusting. Oh, um, Harry the Hammer would have been a fair bet. Yeah, but I, I think so. I don't think, I think it, so. Yeah, Wolverhampton yeah. Wanderers, uh, Wolfie and Wendy Wolf have seen better days. Uh, they, could, <laughs> they could do with a bit of a, a hot wash. Um, uh, Luton Town's Happy Harry, Harry the Hatter, he's just um, a spiv with um, kind of. <laughs> there's no two ways about it. Um, Fred Westside burns and a border. So, uh, you've got. Billy the Badger at uh, Billy the Badger at Fulham. Is Here this the most educational round <laughs> buzz, of this? I'm just, we're all buzz, learning. But I haven't got a picture of a buzz. Buzz at Brentford, presumably some kind of shaving device. Yeah. Uh, Gully the Seagull at Brighton. <laughs> Bertie B. Bellaby at uh, Burnley. Pete the Eagle uh, at Crystal Palace. Yeah. Sounds like a man who sells stuff outside. <laughs> Happy Harry. I got it off Pete the Eagle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mighty Red, Moonchester, Hercules the Lion, Villa, Robin Hood, Nottingham Forest. He returned in 2018 after a three year hiatus. Oh. Captain Blair. Chevy United, Chirpy. You uh, said that Spurs, you said that. Yeah, uh, Hammerhead, uh, Wolfie Bunny. Uh, Everton don't have a mascot. It no. was Changi the Elephant. <laughs> I, wonder, I wonder how that happened. Yeah, um, and before that, it was Mr. Toffee, but they don't have one because yeah. uh, obviously Chang's sponsorship has, uh, has ended. Because we all know the nicknames and the and the, mm. and the emblems, but it's the the name of the mascot and all that is a Changi. Right. I mean, yeah, let's I mean, move on from a lot, that. A lot of. A lot of people <coughs> in the crowd are very much mascots in that sense. They're always stressed. Uh, right, uh, towns and cities, Andy, that have clubs who have won the English title since the Football League's formation in so, 1888. Oof. Towns and cities. <coughs> so not the teams, but the towns and cities. Yeah, yeah, All right, yeah, London. Yeah. All right, now, oh, do you, want, do you want straight in? I, oh. I, I was expecting me to read that out again, but you've got it. Manchester. <laughs> Liverpool. Mm, quick game's a good game. <laughs> Birmingham. Preston. Of course. I like it. Sheffield. Mm-hmm. Leeds. Leicester. Like it. Newcastle. Surprisingly, it's suddenly uh, thin on the ground, isn't it? Um, Derby. Powerhouses. Nottingham. <laughs> when you talk about big clubs this is what it's all about Wolverhampton <laughs> Sunderland Burnley oh, getting thin on the ground now they are aren't they four left blimey it's time Portsmouth? Are you gay? Yes! That was one of mine. Sex. I'm out now. Hardcore um, super sex. Let's go for Blackpool. Andy Brassel. Oh wins. man, I lost nah. again. <laughs> I'm still thinking about Harry the Hornet or right. something. Yeah. I'm still thinking about the mascots. <laughs> hey, but he's championship. He is. Yeah. yeah, is, yeah. yeah. Uh, Blackburn. Oh, Blackburn. Blackburn. Yeah. Well, I said Blackpool. I Blackburn. know. Silly. Um, Huddersfield. Wouldn't have got that. Ipswich. Mm. And Ipswich. finally for now, West Bromwich. But Ipswich, if Ipswich you had a good is thing. Ipswich town. Oh, was it mm. towns and cities? Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Was it towns and cities? Yeah. yeah. I was just thinking cities. Well, there you go. There you yeah. are, you see. Isn't it a pity that Andy in the city yeah. got, got it wrong? <laughs> well, Andy, my stinking run won. continues, but yeah. well done to you, sir. Well, you didn't throw well it away. Andy won it. Have some respect. All right. For the, for the game. And myself. For the lust <laughs> for, for winning. Cheers for watching another fantastic clip from the Football Ramble podcast. Make sure you click like on this video and subscribe to the channel, which means you will not miss a single upload.